Konnichiwa, Japan fans. In today's show, we're going to talk about questioning skills. Za eigyo desu. Sore dewa igimasho. So let's get going. This is the seventh year of the Sales Japan series podcast, broadcasting around the world from the Beverly Hills of Japan, Minato-ku, here in downtown Tokyo. It is Chic Central. I'm your host, Dr. Greg Story, Dale Carnegie Tokyo franchise owner, the president of Dale Carnegie Tokyo Training, and the three-time best-selling author of Japan Sales Mastery, which is Zaego in Japanese, Japan Business Mastery, and Japan Presentations Mastery. Plus, stop wasting money on training in Japanese. Training de okane o mudu ni sumo wa yamimashou. And these are all available now on Amazon. In this podcast, I want to help you to survive and even better, thrive in business. One, sell more, do it more easily. Two, exceed your targets. In fact, blow up your targets. Three, make some serious, serious money. Don't forget to subscribe and share this podcast with your family, friends, and colleagues. We are not being sponsored by Libsyn, but we value your privacy, which is why we have our podcast hosted by Libsyn. Unlike many other hosting organizations, Libsyn have a strict policy that does not allow access to your private information by anyone. Here is our daily podcast lineup on Apple Podcasts. Mondays, the Cutting Edge Japan Business Show podcast. Tuesday, the Presentations Japan series. And every second Tuesday, the Business Touches in No Oshie Show. Wednesdays, the Sales Japan series. Thursdays, the Leadership Japan series. And every second Thursday, the Business Pro Podcast Show. Fridays, the Japan Business Mastery Show podcast. Saturdays, Japan's top business interviews. Now, this is episode number 316, 316. Today, we're talking about are、uh, your buyer questioning skills good enough? Many salespeople contemplating this title would be flummoxed. They don't have really good questions for the client because they don't have any questions whatsoever. They are losers who go straight into the detail, the nitty gritty of their solution. How do they know this is the right solution? They don't worry about that because they are delving into the product catalogs or the flyers for the micro detail of the solution. I can call them losers because they irritate me. They pollute our profession because they never study about how to become better in sales. Also, I will never hurt their feelings because they will never access my content. We know there is a sales cycle which is neither mysterious nor complicated. We establish some rapport, move into questioning the buyer, suggest our solution, deal with any objections, and ask for the order. Simple, right? Uh, maybe not. The questioning part is absolutely key. If we get this wrong, then our solution will be rejected. There are a couple of things we need to be doing to make this work. I was reminded of one of them the other day when I failed to get the deal. Like many salespeople, I get into a rhythm with my sales calls and ask the buyer questions needed. I hear the key points and my mind races toward the best solution for the buyer. I'm confident, sure, this is what they need, but I have cut a corner. I have shaved off a piece of the process because I'm arrogant about my own abilities and forgetting some of the basics. I thought I clearly understood what this client wanted and duly put together a proposal, but she rejected it. I was shocked because I thought I had correctly parsed what she needed for this training for her team. When I reviewed my activity, I realized that while I had her on the Zoom call, I neglected one step which proved to be a deal breaker. I was too sure of myself, which is why I didn't run the solution by her right then and there to check what I was proposing was the right thing for her team. I assumed too much. There are some key things in the questioning process which We should all remember to ask, especially the five whys. What I mean is, we keep drilling down by asking why 
of the answer. For example, in my case, the client says, we want leadership training. But that is a pretty broad church with many alcoves and vaults. I need to ask, why number one? They reply that there is a communication problem between the middle managers and their teams. Why is there a communication problem? That is why number two. Because the leaders are not properly skilled at leading. Why aren't they properly skilled? That's why number three. Because we've never trained them. Why haven't they been trained? That is why number four. Because we never understood it was needed. Why? That's number five. We didn't see the need. We thought they were capable enough. Do you see how this works? Find out more. We come back from the break. Our show today is being brought to you by our public courses, but we also do custom in-house programs as well as doing them both in Japanese and English. On the 30th of November and again on the 7th of December, these are two separate programs, we're running our flagship Dale Cunney course, Leadership Excellent, on building your leadership skills. Because it works on your communication skills, your people skills, also your stress management skills. Plus, it has this special factor of helping us all come out of our comfort zone to be everything we should be. Excellent program. On the 12th of the 12th, on the 12th of December, we're doing our Leadership Training for Managers course. Planning, innovation, handling mistakes, delegation, performance assessments. Everything you can possibly imagine that you need to know about leading is in this program. Excellent course for people who've been placed in leadership programs and never been given the training on how to do it. Go to our website at japan-dalecarnegie.co.jp. That is japan-dalecarnegie.co.jp. Get my best-selling books, Japan Sales Mastery, which is Zaegyo. This is the Bible for selling in Japan. Japan Business Mastery, Japan Presentations Mastery, plus Stop Wasting Money on Training, which in Japanese is Training De Okani o Muru ni Sunu wa Yami Masho. And all are available on Amazon. If you like learning by watching videos, then we have nearly 2,000 there for you at Tokyo Japan Daokani TV on YouTube. We release three TV shows every week on YouTube. The Cutting Edge Japan Business Show, that's the premier business show on Japan. It comes out every Monday, Tokyo time. Fridays, we have the Japan Business Mastery Show. And on Saturdays, we release Japan's top business interviews, where I interview leaders from SMEs all the way up to the corporate captains of industry on the topic of leading in Japan. Every second Thursday, we release the Business Pro Television Show. Don't forget, you can email me at greg.story at dalecarnegie.com. Welcome back. Another brilliant question is, why now? Whenever a client tells us they have a problem, we should always ask this timing question because it will help us to understand what is driving the organization to take action. They might say, COVID revealed the leadership ability gap of our leaders in the example I used. They might say there is a new president or Headquarters has issued a mandate about this and they are rolling out the solution country by country or the competitors are taking our market share or we have surplus funds at the end of the year and we don't want to hand it back, etc. Knowing this helps us to establish their sense of urgency and commitment to take some action to fix the problem. Having a problem and actually doing anything about it are worlds apart. Another object on the sales call is to ask a question which they have not considered. We want to get them thinking about one of two things. We haven't thought about that or we haven't prepared for that. This is not easy, but is the mark of the professional in sales. Anyone can ask about simple questions about their current situation and where they want to be and try and build a solution around that. Getting the client to project into the future and see trouble aplenty is the ideal outcome. 
we now move from being the salesperson to becoming their trusted advisor, flagging key issues they haven't considered. In my example, I could ask, if this communication problem between your staff and their managers continues, there's a strong chance the engagement levels of the staff will go down and they will be open to recruiters encouraging them to leave and go work for your competitors. Given the declining population and no major immigration on the horizon, there is going to be a continually huge problem regarding recruiting new staff. There's also a major disruption of the business whenever people leave and new people have to be trained. Have you factored these occurrences into your calculations about achieving this year's targets? The client is thinking about a simple leadership problem, but we are talking about a business disruption problem through lack of retention of key people. They haven't considered this possibility and it ramps up the urgency of fixing this issue right now before they start losing people. It makes us look like a genius to be pointing out this brewing issue for them so that they can take actions to prevent it occurring. Questioning buyers is basic yet critical. But beyond that, being able to ask brilliant questions which drive action and underline urgency are operating at a higher level level of sales professionalism. Is that the level you are operating at right now? Thank you for joining the Sales Japan series. If you found the program useful, then please work on your karma and share this with your family, friends and colleagues. Don't forget to subscribe and share this podcast. Immediately apply what you've learned today. Go out there and survive. Use it and make some serious money. Bucks, go. Moolah, Coin, Dosh, Lolly, Ready, Smackers, Earners, and Bread and Honey. Remember, I'm in your corner, committed to your success here in Nippon. <laughs>